fifteen files while one of my presenters copying his uh, files. So let's start. Let's start uh, session four C. This is a visual analytics. This session will discuss innovative visualization tools and methods which can be used to address the transportation challenges of today. So today we have uh, four wonderful presentations. Um, thanks for waiting for the last session. <laughs> uh, first presentation, uh, Ting Ting Huang from Iowa State University. She is going to present implemented, implementing data quality assurance with visualization tools. Hello everyone, I'm Ting Ting Huang from Iowa State University. Well, my topic today is implementing the data quality assurance with visualization tools. Uh, so, we are facing and dealing with data every day. Uh, no matter the researchers or engineers, uh, many research studies and applications are data driven. So before we're using this data, the first question is what's the quality of that data? So that's my topic here. We want to uh, assure our data is good and we will remove any noisy in our data to uh, create a better study and application. Uh, so in Iowa, we have two kind of two sorts of data. One is the uh, roadside radar sensors, and another is the probe data set. And um, in this study, I'll do two separate subjects. One is for the radar sensor. We have developed a um, self health monitoring of the radar sensors, and the, for probe data, go to the real data availability on the probe data. Uh, so at the bottom, we can see uh, the, a radar sensor example, and in Iowa State, we have over 400 radar sensors, uh, mainly on the urban interstates. And for Eurex, we have a better full coverage of the whole state. Yes, so the problem here is we want to answer what the data quality is. So there are basically three aspects. First is the completeness. And second is the accuracy, and the last is for probe data only, it's the real time availability. And uh, as I mentioned, we have two different types of data, we will do it separately. And for radar sensor, it could provide your speed and volume and occupancy, but for Eurex data, the probe data will only have speed in that. Uh, so let's talk about how we uh, produce this. First is the hot topic big data. Because uh, data is growing every day. So in our uh, lab, we use the raw data in high resolution, which is 20 seconds interval. We pull out the data from the URL, that, which is provided by the vendor, and download it and store it in uh, HDFS, which is a Hadoop distributed file system. This platform is very powerful. It can enable the HPC, which is a high performance computing. Uh, instead, uh, it's different from the traditional computing where you need to dump, uh, dump all the data in a RAM, in a single RAM. Uh, this uh, file system can parallel process a very large size of your data. And uh, after we calculating and storing those data, we output it to Tableau and create our own visualization uh, on a daily basis and in real time. So basically, now this process is uh, fully automated. Uh, we schedule the program running every night, in the middle of night, mid midnight, then uh, refresh the visualization every day. So after we build up the system, we just, we just need to uh, care about where your data source is. We don't need to worry about all this process now. Uh, so for the radar sensor, because we didn't compare it Eurex data, we just use the self health monitoring, so we need to conduct an uh, algorithm to check the sensor data uh, accuracy. We have a different uh, category in this radar sensor quality, and each category has different type. I know it's kind of blur because I cannot see it from my side. So, uh, first type is the raw data error because we have we know that sometimes the raw data is noisy and sometimes it's have, uh, kind of error like a negative speed or uh, if you have zero uh, volume but you have a positive uh, speed number then we uh, catalog that as a raw data error. 
And we also check the downtime summary for the sensors, because the sensor will report to you the status of it. Uh, if it is off or failure, or just simply missing data. And we also check the volume and the speed distribution generated from that sensor to see if it has an uh, outlier is uh, extremely low in that data set. And the last part is the performance we calculate. Basically, we calculate the volume and the speed difference between two adjacent sensors. Uh, so on three way, we, uh, we assume that there should, shouldn't be big difference between two sensors. So we also calculate this difference. The last one is the vehicle lens error. This is employed by the previous literature for the uh, loop sensor uh, error detection. We just we use the volume, speed, and occupancy data to calculate the effective average effective vehicle lens, and this number should play in uh, 10 to 75 feet for a single vehicle. So any data uh, outside of this range, we flag it as an error. So let's go to the visualization part. Uh, this is for radar sensor. First is the completeness. We did we develop the two dashboards for the completeness. The left part is for the electronic system check. Uh, there's three panels in the dashboard. The top one is the overall percentage of data you're getting every day. So you can quickly look at into this line to see which day you may have lost a lot of data. And the middle part is the number of records per hour. So basically you can look where you then your data is losing. And the last part is the operational number of operational sensors in every day. So uh, basically, you can see the green bar means uh, the number of sensors has over 90% of operational data. And the red bar is, means those sensors are basically have only have less than 10% of operational data, which means they are maybe uh, turning off or failure. If you click on those bars, you can also see lo the location of those sensors. Uh, basically, those red bars are some work from the work zone sensors because they, they are temporal sensors. Uh, once they are finished, they will remove it and they won't report any data. But that sensor may be still in the data inventory. So that's the problem we need to talk to the vendors and let them to remove those uh, retired sensors. And the second, uh, the right part is a uh, sense is a sensor level data convenience. Uh, we rank all the sensors with the missing data weight. So you see the list of those sensors. If you click on any number of sensors, any name of sensors, or the bay of that sensor, uh, the bottom one will show the detail of that sensor. You can see this sensor I selected had lost. Uh, over half day data in that I think is July 17th of some day. And then <coughs> the blue area means operational and the orange area means failure. This that sensor start failure uh, start failure from that day. So this is the problem in the sensor. We can report this uh, also to the uh, vendor to allow them to check this sensor. For the accuracy, I, uh, we use the algorithm I just described before. And we developed this visualization. This is the overall view of the dashboard. We have some uh, mirror selector on the left, because we have uh, so many mirrors. We want to check them one by one. And once you uh, click on it, we, uh, set a mirror you selected, then the dis display panel will show the chart for that mirror. And on the right side, you have a sensor selector. You can select any sensor on any road direction or uh, based on the ownership. And also, we provide a heat speed heat map for that sensor. If you click on the sensor on the map, then uh, at the bottom right, you will see the speed heat map for that sensor. Uh, first is the raw data arrow. We click on the mirror selector. Of of raw data error, we can see three different, different types of raw data errors by day and night.
and we also can select the downtime summary. For this sensor, we can see uh, lots of failure in this sensor, and most of them are happening in nighttime. And we also can check the speed and the volume distribution by time of day or day of the week. There are two, there are two uh, dashboards, I just know them. Um, if you see an outlier in your speed data and all your volume data, you can identify the problem. And we also summarize the vehicle lens error. Here is the difference we calculated between two adjacent sensors. Um, in this graph, uh, the speed heat map is showing uh, from bottom to top. This is the travel direction, which is the northbound direction. We select four sensors. You can see the, bottom, the second from the bottom has low speed all the time compared to its neighbors. And then you uh, check the left chart. You can see the speed difference drops down at that sensor, then go back at the next sensor. So we can identify the problem happened in the second, uh, second from bottom sensor. Also, we uh, output all the rankings of those sensors every five weeks, every two weeks. So for the IREX data, we do two things about it. First is also the completeness. This is a similar with the real trust data. We have a dashboard for the completeness. First uh, panel is the uh, overall percentage we are receiving already. And the second one is uh, how many sensors has, have already completed uh, over 95% of the data already. So you can see in the middle, there's one thing. Most of the sensors uh, doesn't have enough data. And other days, they have sufficient data. And at the bottom left, this is the map. You can click on every segment. Then uh, the detail will show in the bottom graph. But here I select two segments. For the top, top one is an uh, interstate segment. We can see uh, the blue area means high quality data, which is scored 30 in years, which means it's a real time data. And the orange area is the score 20 data, which is a combination of your real time data and historical data. And the red area is score 10 data, which is pure historical data, it's not real time data. So we can see for interstate segment, most of the time you can get the real time data. But at night, you only get historical data. And for a non interstate uh, segment, most of the time you are not getting, getting the real time data. It's just historical data or documentation. The data quality is not, is not as good as your interstate data. Regarding this, we have a specific dashboard for the IREX data, real-time data availability. This is the yearly summary for all the IREX TMC segments in Iowa. This is the data from uh, 2014, and we can, the segment is covered by the uh, percentage of real-time data in the year. So the green color means you have uh, over 90% of real-time data in, uh, throughout the year. But the red color means you, do, you have less than 10 percent of real time data. So basically, the same thing we can see here uh, in Iowa. I don't know how you know about Iowa. So the blue, uh, the green horizontal line is I80, and the vertical line is I35. And on the left is I29, and we also have I S380. Those green lines are basically only interstates, but your arterial, your other roads, they only have very less of real time data. So you may want to know, uh, when you buy those data from Unix, does it really give you the real time data all, always for all the roads? You need to check this before you run any uh, application or research which you require real, real time data. You need to select those roads with a uh, high percent of real time data, which is good quality data. Okay. Yeah, you can also click on each bar to see where those segments are located. Here is a, a less than ten percent of real time data. Those segments are basically local uh, streets. And uh, and also in the west south bottom of Iowa, we don't have much of good data there. So this is a. Uh, 
hourly uh, summary. We can also do daily summary, hourly summary. Here I select hourly summary to see the time variation. And here I select 12 a.m. So throughout the year, at 12 a.m., most of segments are not providing any real-time data. This is reasonable because the probe data depends on the uh, probe variables. If we don't have that enough volume in uh, nighttime, we don't have those real-time data. So you can see the red bar is very high. We don't have enough real-time data. And when we shift to 8 a.m., so the traffic starts, you can see basically the interstate are getting real-time data now. And for other uh, rows, it's still in a half. So uh, my study here is two part, has two parts. First, we need to run algorithm on read data sensor data to check the completeness and the accuracy of those read data sensors. Then we can report it to the vendor every week or every two weeks and let them to schedule the troubleshooting opportunities. And for the UREX data, which we mainly use it for the researchers. Well, if you want to do anything uh, related to real-time data, you better check this first to uh, set your target at the right place. Otherwise, you won't have the good data to write your model. So that's, the, that's my study here. Thank you.